Yeah, I love it. I, I it's a weird addiction to have, and uh, it's there's no forgiveness every time you get into that tank. It's 37 degrees. Why is it so cold? You know, yeah. like I, I'm, it's literally numbingly freezing. And I was like, man, I was sitting in the sauna, and I was like, I bet you I could probably design something that might be way more comfortable than this. If you don't agree with me, then we can't be friends. We can't be friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's the big one. That's man. the crazy it's, one, right? It's- Welcome. This is live from Langley, BC, the number one podcast in Langley, where we talk about local <laughs> news and events, right? Not, not to step on any toes, uh, as well as highlight some of the interesting people who call Langley home. Today, we have a fellow podcaster from Langley, also has the number one podcast in Langley, might I add? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> founder of this, the This Is Life podcast and Boreas Plunges, which is Canada's most comfortable cold plunge, which we're going to talk about true. today. Please help me welcome Jamie Thorne. Jamie, Thank you. Thanks for yep. coming in today. Uh, we worked around each other's schedules, which I'm excited about because it sounds like we have a lot in common. So I'm excited to get into all of that. Yeah. Before we do, let's maybe go a little bit deeper into who you are for anybody listening who doesn't know who you are. Well, my name is Jamie Thorne. Um, I grew up in Brookswood. I uh, went to Brookswood Secondary. Uh, graduated 2005. So coming up on the 20 year reunion, not too far away. But um, yeah, I'm a husband, father of three children. Um, been self-employed now for probably about 15 years. Um, so I've started another company. Well, I guess I'll back up. I, I've been self-employed for in construction for like mostly residential construction, like re- uh, renovations. Um, yeah. And then uh, I started also a cold plunge company, which now we've been, we launched the website uh, in last November. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a busy, busy road so far. So, but yeah, no, it's good. I love it. Brookswood, eh? I didn't even know that. I went to Brookswood too. Yeah. Yeah. So I grad at 05. Okay. So years. I was in there in 08. So yeah. we, we, we probably didn't cross paths. But no. then that means that you grad at 05. That means you were part of the um, the, the glory days of basketball there. Pretty much. Yeah. I had a few friends play. Oh, glory, glory days. Yeah. Brett Laurie. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was good. I was better friends with uh, his sister, Danielle. Okay. Yeah, she was in my grade. Older? Yeah, so she's probably 36 now. Okay. Um, but yeah, she ended up going to, I think, the state of Washington. She played for Huskies. Team Canada, right? Yeah, and she was a pitcher for Team Canada. Right, right. Yeah. And then, yeah, I remember, I remember, well, Laura, yeah, because he would have been younger, because I was there grade eight. Yeah. He was graduating. Yeah, he was, you could tell early in the day, because I went to elementary school with both of them, oh, yeah. that he was going to be like a freak athlete, because he was. He was like, I think he was dunking in like grade 10 oh, or wow. something like that. But yeah. But then, you know, he went and played Blue Jays and everyone knows how that turned out. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah, no, there was a lot of drama involved with that. But hey, like to come out of Langley, you know, it's pretty cool yeah. to have that, you know, story. Well, so. there's a few like bands too. I think Gob. Remember yeah, Gob? Yeah. I think they came from Brooks with Daniel Wesley. Daniel Wesley, yeah. He's probably like the biggest. But um, yeah, there's definitely been a few sports, uh, people going into higher levels of sports, I guess, coming from Brookswood too. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have that, um, I mean, I guess it depends on on the coaching, but I think th- yeah. it all comes down to the culture around the sports. Yeah. Right, because especially with basketball, I remember we were in there from grade eight, yeah. the coaches, and Dano was one of them. Yeah, yeah. He was a uh, jumping in coach with the Brent Reddick. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they, were, they were preaching at grade eight. Get in here at 6 a.m. or you're not starting. And yeah. it was like coming out of elementary school, you're kind of like, who are these guys? You know. Yeah. But it was like that commitment to, okay, if you want to actually you know, start, if you want to get better and, and have our faith that you're going to actually you know, be clutch when yeah. the time comes, you got to start coming in, shoot your free throws. Yeah, like uh, I felt rugby was big too. Oh, yeah. Rugby was definitely big. Who did you have for a coach there? Well, I had uh... – Mr. Panasiak. Okay. Um, and then who else was the coach? There was a, there was a, there was another there was another coach. I forgot his name now, but he was uh shorter in the wrestling. Yeah, um, that was uh, is it Hunt Hunter? I don't know. I forget, but, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was our coach. But yeah, our 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 year was pretty lack for uh for basketball, rugby. I mean everything. We yeah. were not. We were not. We were like the disappointment after that huge peak that you guys reached. And then my brothers here came in a couple of years after they went to provincials, and I was like, "Wow, we're just that 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 little dip in performance. That's us right there." 
panned out a little bit. Yeah, no, there wasn't too much, um, I guess, culture in the later years. People were too cool for sports, you know? That, yeah, that like I played, I guess, rugby in grade eight. I played soccer all the way through Brooks or through grade eight to grade 12. And oh, then nice. I played rugby again in grade 12. But I was, I figured out early, like my body wasn't built for rugby. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it never was. I have some friends that went pretty far in rugby and uh, still play at the Langley Rugby Club. But it's like, they're a different breed. Like, you know, the way they get hit and stuff. You're like, oh man, like yeah. the impact is so hard. So if you're a soccer player, then like me. Was. Um, <laughs> no, well, was at the time when you played rugby, you yeah. probably played like backs, like full back or something like that. Yeah. And you were the kicker? Or, Part-time, yeah. yeah. My buddy Sean, he was a kicker too. But he, it was like, it seemed like the guys with the soccer background always had like the better kicks. Oh yeah. And stuff no, like no that. Chance. But yeah. I never had the size. I had the speed, mm-hmm. but I was small in high school. Mm-hmm. I feel like I... I didn't hit a growth spurt till I graduated. Oh, really? Yeah, I was, I was small yeah, in high tough. school. That's tough. I've seen that a lot, though. But, I mean, it's, you know, that's the thing. High school is such a small portion of time, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, it plays a huge factor in sports like that. I yeah, oh, yeah. Um. So, okay, that's awesome. Didn't know we had that in common. Yeah. Good to know. Maybe we'll put some plugs in there for some of the Brookswood people. <laughs> like, uh, for example, Dano, I'm, I'm, I've been talking to him. It'd be cool to hear more about, you know, the Brookswood basketball program. I don't know if uh, you still, you said he was your brother. Step brother. Yeah. Step brother. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. We've, yeah, because my, I guess dad remarried with his mom and then we ended up going to school together, like elementary school. And then one day we were step brothers. And then his dad was, uh, was like the music teacher. The band uh, no, that's his uncle. Oh, that's his uncle. Yeah, oh, that's Keith. Okay, Keith Ellingham okay. was the uh, guitar because he was my teacher. Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Small world, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. So, on this podcast, we talk a lot about Langley, right? And then, so you grew up here. You have a business though, too. Yeah. Right. The original, like what you started working in, was in contracting. Yeah. Like, what are you finding? Like, I want to touch on that before we move into the cold plunge into the, all the, yeah, the yeah. fun stuff, the fun right? Stuff. What, what, what were you working on really with contracting around here? Um, well, I started out building custom homes, I guess, August of like 2005, when I remember in like Morgan Heights. And then from there, um, I moved on to residential kind of renovations and then I went back to framing and then I ended up going up and living in Whistler for a little bit in my early twenties, building up there. Um, yeah, mostly custom homes. And then I ended up after that, I went into sort of like uh, Vesta Properties, which they have a building, I think, not far from here. Um, and then I worked for um, my, actually my old business partner, Russ, we ended up, well, he already worked for his dad. And then I gave him a call because we were in first year carpentry school together and we actually worked on the same site. And then when I got home uh, from Australia, traveling a little bit with a friend in my early twenties, I gave Russ a call and then I ended up working for his dad for quite a few years. And then I went back to custom homes after that. I kind of bounced around a lot. And then we kept in touch because we became kind of good friends and we still talk to this day. And then we ended up meeting up because he had a kid. And then I was like, man, why don't we start our own business? And then it was sort of like a green light. It was like, oh man, like I, I was already thinking of business names that night. And I called him. I was like, hey, like I couldn't sleep last night. I was so excited. He's like, oh, same here. I was thinking of business names too. And then we ended up pairing up together. And then we were together for about eight years or nine years. And then we ended up having a good chat one day. We just decided to like move on. We literally flipped a skill saw blade and divided up the tools. Like there was no bad blood or anything. And then I started vaulted contracting. And now I've been pretty much by myself for, I guess... It's got to be at least three to four years now. So, so building like custom homes and, uh, or where are you specializing in right now? It's mostly residential renovations, okay. like, um, like full guts of homes and remodeling the kitchens and bathrooms, decks and everything like that. So I have my whole team of guys when it comes to electricians and plumbers and drywallers, painters and everything. Um, but, um, like I did live edge tables for a little while. Okay. Like I like using my hands. Like I like being active all the time, but, um, and then yeah, then I'm still doing it, but then building cold plunges on the side when we get orders. So, mm-hmm. And yeah. it goes hand in hand, right? Like you yeah. can probably even use some of the materials. You're like, oh, I could probably reuse some of that. Yeah, like I I enjoy building stuff and like I'm quite anal with stuff. So that's when it comes, that's why you can kind of be successful in that line of business is, is making sure everything looks good. And because like the owners won't even pick up on certain things until I show them and they're like, oh, wow, how did you see that? I'm like, I just, I can't help it. It's just in my mind and it has to look a certain way. And it's kind of a problem. Like if I walk into someone's house, I'm looking at every single line, what type of moldings they use. I'll compare 
like a fridge panel with a molding beside it to see if it's the same distance all the way down. Like I can't help it. Like it's kind of like in me Mm -hmm. and I blame my old boss that I used to work for. He kind of made me like that a little bit when I was framing custom homes because they're quite expensive and then everything's got to be kind of perfect. So he taught me a little bit with that, but I think it was already in me. So I'm always anal with stuff. And that's when it came to uh, residential renovations that was kind of just really good at it naturally in a way. So when it led to designing a cold plunge, I thought of every single angle that I could have. Um, but yeah, no, it's been quite a journey so far. And that's far. why if I find like, th- we'll talk about them, but yeah. they're, they look very, very uh, unique. Yeah. The way they're built. Yeah. Um, Try to design it for comfort. Kind of aesthetically pleasing too. Like yeah. just like the like the whole design. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's been a journey and a half. Like we, th- I thought, cause I had a good friend uh, partner up with me for the financial part of it, but also like website design and, Um, he's a big crypto guy and, um, I had him help me out and we came up with a name and everything like that. And he designed the entire website and built it too. And I'm more like the manufacturing design and cause I build them at my house cause I have a big shop at home. But, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a challenge for sure. Like, especially being a a full time still on the tools with work and, you know, trying to plan out projects and then being a father at the same time and being a husband and, you know, the dog at home and everything too. So it's, I'm pretty full tilt 24 seven. Yeah. I mean, that's, but, but you're driven though, because it's pa- something you're passionate about, right? For both, sure. On yeah. both, both sides. I mean, all three with the family, personal, with the side hustle and then the main, yeah. main job. Um, so like going back to the contracting though, like what, what would you say would be like the favorite thing that you, you like to do when it comes to the type of work that you're doing with contracting? What it's would, kind of what all would over you the map. Think? Um, Cause I learned framing. So it's always cool to see, to be at the beginning of a project, building it and then seeing the final stages. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've learned a lot along the way. I can literally do everything in a house. Um, I actually quite enjoy doing tile work cause I, I have good, I have friends of mine that are quite really good at installing tile and it's not the hardest thing to do, but it's very rewarding. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like I enjoy doing interior finishing because that's always kind of nice because it's like a finished product besides just like, you know, filling it and painting it. But um, I don't know if I like one thing really particular. Um, maybe the more the finishing aspect, if I could say anything. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy actually just meeting new people too. And that's one of the reasons why like I love doing podcasts is like I just like to talk to people. I, I just enjoy mingling with people and stuff. But yeah, it's probably leaning towards more of the finishing side. Mm-hmm. When it comes to uh, construction, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, like you were saying on the phone before, you said you were, you know, trying to lean away and go into, uh, you know, the cold plunge. And I was just, you know, you end up finding the things you love to do, and you focus on that. And then yeah. the rest, I mean, realistically, you wouldn't even have to step away. You just, you know, hire on, yeah, to, to have those other tasks that you're not too fond of, yeah, basically covered by somebody else. Yeah, and that's exactly what kind of like a general contractor is, anyways. So eventually, you kind of. You kind of learn as much as you can. You're not going to learn everything, but that's why you hire people. Mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it's, that's how business works. Mm-hmm. You don't need to know how to do every single thing. You want to know a little bit about like say plumbing or electrical, like, you know, drywall is pretty straightforward and paint is pretty straightforward, but it has certain steps that it needs to take to be a finished product. But it's good to learn like how to do finishing and learn how to do flooring and put cabinets in and stuff like that. Not just for knowledge, but when you purchase a house, it might take you a lot longer to do that at home than a project, but it's, I think for like, uh, having that knowledge in life in general, that's when I like understand building, I think is a great aspect to have. For sure. So Yeah. That's something I noticed too, with like my profession is like, once you understand the building, mm-hmm. right. Once you've talked to builders and they tell you like, this is what people do, this is how you do it. Yeah. Well, now you go into any home. Yeah. Like brand new could be like 50 years old, yeah. but you're looking out for these different things that stand out that you're like, oh, that shouldn't be this way. That shouldn't yeah. be that way. They should have done that. And now you can advise whoever you're advising the right way or even help, like you said, point it out, right? Even if, if, if you know, it's not going to benefit you, it's like, oh, somebody else is going to do that or whatever. Especially for you as a real estate agent, like you can almost figure out, like I can walk into a house and someone's like, hey, is this a structured wall? I can kind of look around, figure out like how I would have laid the joists out, how thick the wall is. Like, yeah, it might not be a structured wall. But if you learn that as a real estate agent, that's even better for you as well. Oh yeah, that's yeah. huge. Yeah, and so people's eyes light up and they're like, oh really? I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, you can, we're not supposed to really give that 
tight level of advice, but yeah. you know, you could suggest it like, Hey, it's possible. Right. Yeah. Um, that's cool. that's cool that, I mean, that's where the passion started. And, and so what made you want to get into the cold plunge world? Um, I've always been a person to push myself when it comes to like challenges just in life in general. Um, my cousin actually sent me a video probably a couple of years ago now. And a friend of his out in North Van had a setup at his house where he had uh, like an infrared sauna. And then he made a video of himself walking out of it. And then he took like an outdoor shower and then he opened up this freezer and had all this ice and water in it. And I was like, oh, he's like, man, this is cold plunging. I'm like, it's kind of cool. I was like, I could probably do that at home. So I ended up um, just purchasing a freezer and brought it into my shop, dried it out, siliconed all the inside corners. And then I poured like a concrete pad uh, beside my shop. And then I just filled it up full of water and I turned it on. I sort of guessed because you don't want that water overflowing anywhere anyways, but um, I turned it on, left it for like a day and a half and the ice built up and then I would unplug it or turn it off. And then my brother-in-law lives next door because we have kind of like a compound set up with the in-laws and then our properties are next to each other. So me and him went in it and we had to like break through the ice and then we sat in it and I was like, it was probably around 37, 38 degrees, which is between like two and three and a half degrees Celsius. And we get in and I was like, holy shit, like it's so intense. And there's more and more data coming out now with cold plunging. It's not just some fat, it's going to be here forever. Um, yeah. And that's kind of where I started. And then the freezer is not the most comfortable thing. Plus it's stagnant water, just kind of gets dirty pretty quick. There's no water flow. There's no filter. I was like, man, I was sitting in the sauna and I was like, I bet you I could probably design something that might be way more comfortable than this. And I was actually sitting on the couch one night with it reclined. I was like, well, this is a very comfortable position to be in. And so I actually like went and grabbed a tape measure and kind of leaned it back and measured it out. And then I ended up building it all out of wood first. And then I would have um, people that were, you know, five, three to six, two, six, three sit in it. And like, Hey, how's, what's the width feel like? Are your feet too close to the end? Is it too far back? So it's like, you feel like you're falling back instead of say, say like you're in a reclining chair. So then I made tiny adjustments, made all the measurements, and then I got in touch with a guy out in Abbotsford, smooth line welding that ends up doing like amazing work. So I was like, Hey, this is what I want to do, blah, blah, blah. So then he made me a tank. So then, uh, I built a frame for it. I reached out to my, my good friend, Mike Long for the financial part. And he's my partner with Boreas. And I was like, Hey, this is my idea. I went to his place in Vancouver and I was like, this is what I want to do. You know, I think this is what it'll cost. So then it gave, gave me the funds and then. Uh, a good friend of mine, Luke Crowbath, who owns uh, Ocean Wave Pools, him and his brother, Josh, helped me out a lot with the whole design of how the water would work and what needs to be done. So I reached out to another friend for a chiller and he forwarded me to a friend of his and I found this uh, chiller that I needed. And then Luke kind of designed the whole system. Um, so, but then I have to get a third party inspection, uh, to make sure that it's safe and everything. And it's so funny. The guy walked into my shop where it was set up with water running and instant fail <laughs> because it was like the wrong wiring. It's all these safety things. The, the tank needs to be grounded. I have to have a current collector. So if anything happens to the chiller that won't shoot back in the water and, you know, electrify someone in there. So I have to have this current collector is like a 10 inch tube that has a metal tube in it. Uh-huh. It has like a lug nut that sticks up that you have to ground that back to a metal ball. Like there was so much stuff. Yeah. I was like, I didn't even think of this stuff, but the guy that inspects it is like such a nice guy. He didn't even charge me for the first time and stuff. Cause usually he's like, when you tried to explain this to me on the phone, I was like, I knew you weren't going to pass. So I was <laughs> like, okay, thank you very much. And uh, so I'd made all these changes. I spoke to my electrician. Hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I need like RW90 wiring. I need a metal box. I need a GFI. Like there were so much things. And finally came back. He's like, yeah, you're good. So then we had to try and figure out, you know, what are we going to use on the outside? How the access panel is going to work and how are we going to get fresh air? Because with the building background, like, hey, we need fresh air. We need air flow in here. Um, We had to spray foam the underside of the 12 gauge stainless steel tank that we use for condensation. We have to pipe wrap everything because the water is so cold. You know, it's just, it was so many challenge after challenge after challenge all the way down to a hand make the cedar handles and stuff like that because I couldn't find anything that I liked and trying to find the vents. It was just like problem after problem after problem. Yeah, you're mixing water with electricity. So I mean, yeah, it's not the easiest. It has to be safe. So it's, it's been, it's, it's been quite a while, but it's like we've solved every problem and there's always tweaks that I want to make. I want to change how the feet work now and 
but uh, it's been quite a journey. So it's, it's, I, I prefer cold water now. Like I never shower inside my house anymore. <laughs> like I, cause I have a, a wood burning sauna at home that I do every night. And then I go have an outdoor cold shower to rinse the sweat off. And then I'll get into the plunge for probably around three minutes and then, you know, go change and then go back inside the house and shiver for 45 minutes till I go to bed. But yeah, I love it. I, I it's a weird addiction to have. And, uh, it's, there's no forgiveness. Every time you get into that tank, it's 37 degrees. Yeah. It so always hurts. It's it, like, you're just, yeah. your only thing that's improving is just your min- min- mindset about, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's getting over the fear of getting in cold water. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of like the first step. And then there's, you know, you got to make sure you control your breathing and you'll come up to a mental wall. You got to break that down. You'll hit another mental wall. You got to break that down. And you kind of mm-hmm. only really need to do minimum two minutes anyways to kind of get the central nervous system benefits and stuff, at least coming from Wim Hof, which is probably the most popular name and incredible version. Exactly. Yeah. He's been doing it forever, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's been a journey and I just, I love doing it because it's, it's difficult and I like to do uh, difficult things. So yeah, definitely. Do you ever do that in the morning or just at night? Um, I used to do it in the morning. Uh, I, a friend of mine down the street would run down every morning and we'd get in at 5 a.m. Even when it was like negative 12 out that week, I'd leave the lid off. So we'd have to break through the ice, like walk through the snow to get into the water. And because I had the lid off, the it cooled the water down to 33, which was like the coldest water I've ever been in. And we were getting in between for like three to five minutes at like 5 a.m. But part of me was like, what do you, you don't have to plunge twice a day. Like you need to do 11 minutes a week. So mm-hmm. if you want to do five minutes one day and six minutes the next day. 11 done, minutes a week, what, what's that from? That is like based off kind of the studies that Susanna Soberg have done and like uh, Huberman's podcast. He talks a lot about cold immersion. And that's where the benefits lie is 11 minutes a week. So if you want to spread that out over four days or five or six days, that's kind of what the protocol is. But um, I don't do it in the mornings anymore. Like I get up early still because that's kind of my time before the kids are up and everything. It's That's the time for me to relax. And I have to tone myself down a bit because it's like the ego is like, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, just sit and relax, dude. Like you don't have to be so intense all the time. So I don't really cold plunge in the morning. Um, I'll have a cold shower occasionally in the morning, kind of like a nice way to wake up, wake your mind up a bit. But no, I don't really cold plunge. Is it, would you say, okay, so for me, I, I don't have access to a cold plunge. I've wanted to get one. The cold shower. Yeah. If you have like the cold, like, I don't know if you've been in different showers, but like some showers when you yeah. go cold, it's like numbing cold. Like, yeah. Then there's somewhere like moving into a condo now. It's not even close. Like it's like warm. It's cold, but it's warm. It's not cold enough. Yeah. Like it depends if your city water or well, like it's going to be different temperatures. Plus by the time that water maybe gets to you, like on the 30th or 40th floor, whatever it is, it's going to warm up a little bit. Cause the average temperature in a house is probably between 50 and 55 in the winter months. It might be maybe a couple degrees colder, but a cold shower is still beneficial. That's how I started out. Like I couldn't even do 30 seconds in a cold shower. And now my personal best is 10 minutes in the plunge. I was trying to get to 20, but I was like trying to ease back the ego a little from, bit. From, from, from like my experience doing the showers when it was cold, um, I asked a friend of mine who was doing the, he was like, he gets in like uh golden ears lake yeah. and he, middle of winter, he'll sit in there for 10 minutes. Like no yeah, problem. Cool. He's, he's got, he's got, He's a rugby guy, so you can you can kind of tell the build, yeah, right? Yeah. But I'm like, man, am I like just just I don't want to say the word, but like uh, why why is it so cold? You know, yeah. like I, I'm, it's literally numbingly freezing, and like as soon as I get in there, it's like I start to like shiver uncontrollably, and I I, I get to a point where eventually it's like I get past the three minutes, but it's yeah. not like a comfortable three no. minutes. But I'm like, why is this happening to me in a shower? And he was telling me that it has to do with like the um, heat l- thermal layer mm-hmm. that you you don't you can't you, you can't create that when you're in running water. Whereas if you're in the tub and you're a tank, yeah. you kind of can. You do end up creating like a thermal layer right around. It's like small, but it helps with getting used to the cold a little bit. Yeah, it's like a micro layer. Like, yeah, and that's where our tanks. I have a current. Okay, so there's a jet between your feet oh, that perfect. strips that thermal layer <laughs> off. Because we tried to. Because you're you're just trying to replicate what nature gives us, yeah. you know, for free, but it's like you're getting in uh, a river. Be easier, I was like, oh, no, no, because that was the funny thing. Like, because when I had 
the unit kind of like in test mode inside the shop with like no siding, no plywood, no nothing on it. I remember filling it up actually on my birthday in 20, 2021, November 23rd. I remember filling it up. I'm like, oh, first time in the plunge. It's my birthday. This is awesome. And we were used to the freezer where there was no current. And I got into this thing. And of course, I set the chiller at the coldest it could go at 37. And the difference was like night and day. Like when you have a current, it is far worse. But if you don't have a current, kick your arms and feet because then it breaks that thermal layer and it intensifies it like instantly. Oh, yeah. So then it's like a true cold immersion that you're trying to replicate, like being in a river or in the ocean or something like that. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's intense. And I mean, like, I got to try it. I got to, I got to come. Yeah, I got to come by because I have the sauna too. So, but you're supposed to end on cold. It's better for your metabolic rate and stuff to, because yeah. there are benefits to shivering as well. Yeah. But, you have uh, the internal, the heat, uh, heat up internally so that that's what, essentially that's what all the benefits come from. And, and that's why it also kind of sparks the, the, the fat loss too, they say. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, no, that's, uh, yeah, I have to, I have, I have to get back into it because yeah. Yeah, I started the year off pretty strong and then it's kind of like. Well, it's easy for me because I just walk out my back door because I light my, my, I light my sauna at like. 536 and then it's a wood burning so it heats up at about so two cu- hours in so i'm curious you um you were saying like there's a bunch of mental blocks right and uh mm. this is something like i, I just i'm curious to know about because i learned this through goggins and we're yeah. going to talk about you know all the audiobooks and stuff but yeah he talks about having this cookie jar of things that like you always bring up to mm. like get you through like what are things what are your your big uh your big breakthrough um, um thoughts I just remind myself it's just water and literally it's three minutes out of your entire day and it's nothing. Uh, your mind is screaming at you, but I almost like sing songs in my head or I'll count like, cause I have like a roof over mine just to protect the, the, the cedar a little more. I'll count like where I put the screws or I can see the stars too. So then I'll count the stars. And like, if I sing a certain part of this song, which is like an old school Easy E song that I used to have a, a CD for back in the day in high school. So I'd sing that song and when I'd sing it, I know it's about 50 seconds. So then I could repeat that self, re- repeat that song three to four times and I know I'm around, you know, three or four minutes. Mm. Um, but if you have someone with you, I feel like you're like, well, this person's here beside me. I can't get out yet. You know, like that, the ego kicks in. Um, but yeah, that's what I kind of do. Like in the beginning, it's, it's really funny for me when I have first timers come over to go on the plunge. And I'm like, look, this is probably the coldest water you've ever been in. I was like, don't panic right away. You got, you have to get your breath controlled. And if you want to do a little bit of breathing beforehand, that's always good. That's recommended, but don't get in and just panic right away. Cause people just <laughs> do this right away. I'm like deep breaths in through the nose, out your mouth, relax. If you want to put your hands across your chest that's fine because I know like for me, that's the one thing I don't put in. Like my hands just scream at me to the point where I'm like, it, they're hurting too much. Um, but just breathe, you know, focus, re- try and relax. Cause that's the way I designed the tank was to try and make you comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. Cause most people like put their head up and like, put your head back, like relax, you know, make sure your neck muscles get in the water. Um, but yeah, just breathe through it. Think of, you know, happy thoughts, whatever you want to be, but, um, sing songs, do what you can. Cause again, it's short. And if I know you're supposed to end on cold, but it's like, Hey, if you're really cold and you're shivering like crazy, just go back in the sauna. Mm -hmm. You're fine. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, no, it's, uh, that's crazy. I mean, it's good to know there's, you know, that's a, those are pretty good, uh, ideas to, to think about. What Mm -hmm. is it? Yeah. I had a, one of the first guests here, we were talking about it. This is before I was really into it. They talked about the music for me. I, I do count, I count to like a hundred. Yeah. So like I, I have a timer. So like wherever the timer goes off, that's yeah. when I would get out. But, uh, the me, yeah, it's, you have to just distract yourself. You yeah. can't, you can't let it take up any mental capacity because then it just starts to eat up at, and just control your whole body. Yeah. It's crazy how quick it's fight or flight. Like even on your, like your hands or your toes, how quick your body gives up on them. Cause they're like, we're trying to warm your organs. We got to mm-hmm. keep your core as warm as possible. Like 
it's kind of interesting how the body works. For me, so it's, it's like, my feet, my feet, like instantly, like, I don't yeah. know, it's because playing soccer so much, maybe so many sprained ankles. So, I think it has to do something with like, Circulation you know, the of amount blood. of, in, amount of injury, maybe because for you, your hands, maybe you work with your hands every, all day. Yeah. They're so stressed like, out a little more. Yeah. So yeah. it's easy for the blood. Just see so ya. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, if I don't go on the plunge for more than a couple of days, I can notice because it's really good for sleep, obviously inflammation, sore muscles, uh, huge benefits when it comes to mental health. Um, I feel off the rocker a little bit if I don't do like my hot cold therapy every night, like I'm a little more on edge and stuff like that. And my sleeps aren't the best, but, and that's why I do it right before bed. Cause your, your, your body temperature needs to drop, uh, a certain, uh, certain degrees for you to fall asleep. Yeah. I heard so that. that's why sleeping in the summer sucks. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, yeah. I can't sleep. I was like, okay, you're, you're too warm. Mm-hmm. But that's why I do it before bed. It's just, I, and then I have like sleepy time tea at night. Cause like I'm full tilt from probably six thirty seven till eight at night, just with the kids and stuff and cleaning up and dinner and just, it's a very busy life. So that's a, uh, a great way for me to decompress because I'm running on a 10 all day and it's like, I, I'll, I'll miss a sauna and a cold plunge from here or there, but now I just started a, a 30 day cold plunge challenge. Oh, yeah, um, those are good. Keep you on, uh, on your toes. Yeah. Well, it's for marketing. So like yeah. I have to record myself. So each time I record myself, I'll do, I'll say one beneficial thing about mm. cold immersion and then I'll do a time lapse. Where are you be, posting that? Uh, I send it to actually Mike's girlfriend, Ida, who does all our social media. So it'll be posted up on like Instagram. You should throw but that on TikTok. It is. We just, I'm uh, I'm not, a, I try to stay off social media a little bit just because I. Just get her to do it. She TikTok's does it. like a, like all social media we just started is like a drug it. trap. Like you yeah. just <laughs> pretty much like just <clears throat> dopamine rush. Like I try to post for work, just get caught up in the web, man. Yeah. It's so hard. Just doom scrolling. Just like, oh, let me wait. Wow, this loads. Let me just scroll. All of a sudden, it's been ten minutes. You're yeah, like, oh my God. I live myself. Uh, I changed. I I don't. I only have Instagram on my phone, and I don't have Facebook or anything, or TikTok or Twitter or anything. And um, at least on my phone. Um, and I set it to a half an hour. So as soon as that limit comes up, half hour, I just say okay, and then I'm not allowed back on it. Yeah, I have mine on fifteen minutes, but I always click the. <laughs> yeah, one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have it in a file on my phone saying you crackhead. So yeah, I was no, like, just leave it alone. I just yeah, I know. Just it's, leave it alone. <laughs> it's tough, it's tough. But yeah, no, it's easier for sure. And I mean, that's one of the big things is you as you get better. I think that's something I've noticed with like working out with cold plunges, with doing the hard things every day. Mm-hmm. You can actually take a step back a little bit. You know, a lot of the yeah. time, I see family who are just. They're, they don't want to get off. They don't want to stop oh, their bad habits. Like, you know, if they're drinking, if they're, you know, vaping, if they're smoking, they just, they're like, oh, it's fine. They don't even notice that they're doing it. There, yeah. There's no pattern interrupt because they don't have that strength and, and you know, being Discipline. able to grasp and like break that habit. Right? I know it's, it's probably one of the most addicting things on the planet now. Oh yeah. Like it's, it's, I, it bugs me. Like if we go out like, you know, date night or with the kids, it's you walk into a restaurant and the parents are talking to other parents and the kids are staring at tablets. Like that shit drives me crazy. Or a mom walking down the street with a newborn child staring at that phone. Like I just shake my head. I'm just like, I just want to yell at them. Like it drives me nuts. Yeah, Like that stuff is bad. And I try not to be on my phone around the kids. If I have to write an email, like I'll, I'll leave the room because I just don't want them to see me because I don't want to normalize it. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's very, very, very difficult. Mm-hmm. But you, I th- how many kids do you have? I have three. Three kids. Oh, yeah. wow. And then how old are they? Uh, eight, six, and three. Eight, six, and three. Okay. Yeah. So, and they've never been on any device? No, we, we allow devices, but like well, my oldest, she does like reading on right. the on the iPad, but it's like I give, them, I give them the iPad maybe once every two weeks. Like I've seen a bunch of studies on it and stuff where it's like if you give your, I think a kid like a, where your mind is still developing- Less than an hour a day it doesn't really do much, yeah. but I still seem that seems like a lot to me. Um, but no, I limit it as much as I can. But I feel like it's an evil that's going to be very hard. I feel like it depends what they're watching, right? Because like me, I have a she turned eighteen months yesterday. Nice and like, w- like I when I'm spending time with her, it's like no TV, nothing. We're not watching TV together. We want you know, if she is watching anything, it's like Miss Rachel, which mm-hmm. is like teaching her how to say words yeah right and then it's like okay that it's not like those other shows where they're basically made to capture these kids attention mm-hmm. the same way tiktok is which is like yeah. jump cuts just cut 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 and that's what really um what's it called throws them off because when they look around they're like 
this world is so boring. <laughs> like, yeah. Let me go back to like the cut, cut, cut. Desensitizes them to. Yeah. Well, the attention around. span now is like 15 seconds. Yeah. Which is crazy. I know. And it's just, and they're like, they're designed like that to, to understand what interacts the best with not just oh, yeah. kids, but adults too. Like it's, it's crazy. Like I think the average time adults spend on their phone is like four to six hours and kids are just as bad. And I'm like, that is crazy. Um, that is so much of your day. I'm I'm guilty, like, but only because like I use it for work. So that's like the hard part. I see my times and it's like, yeah, six hours a day. Some of that is writing emails, making phone calls. But there's a difference. Like there's business and pleasure. Like if you're doom scrolling Instagram for an hour or two a day, it's like, really? Like for, for what? Like, but there's like, there's so many good memes. And then there's the group <laughs> chats you're in and you're like, man, this is endless. There like, is, uh, when I'm at the gym, we'll talk about this now. When I'm, the, I'm at the gym, <clears throat> I listen to audiobooks, podcasts, and then not so much music. Music mm-hmm. is like when I'm on my chill days, right? Yeah. Otherwise it's like a motivation, mo- motive, motiversity. I don't know if you've heard that on Spotify. It's like motivational speeches. Okay. One of the things on there is, um, Eric Thomas, he's like a big guy, um, motivational guy. And he talks about like, People on their phones, you literally ask them, stop scrolling. Like, what do you, what did you just see? Mm-hmm. And then you, they, they have nothing to say. They don't even remember what the last video was that they saw. Yeah. And I, I found myself actually doing this too. When I'm caught in that scroll and then I'm like, I realize snap or it, it pops up. Hey, you've been on too long. I realize, what was it? What did I just watched? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is useless. What am I doing? Like, just, where, where did I just go? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You just, so it just makes you something click. You stop. Yeah. Like I charge my phone in the kitchen at night oh, yeah, and then I have funny. my old phone for an alarm. Mm. And it's like, you're not allowed to bring your phone to the bathroom. You know, you don't get the two right dots on your knees. Like, you know, it's there. I just make certain rules for myself. Like if I bring my phone into the sauna, I listen to audible, leave it alone. Mm-hmm. Or if I have to make a video and send it to Ida for, for Boreas. But I like, if we go out, for dinner or something like that, the phone stays at home. Mm. Like, I don't need it. Like, why do I need a phone? You know, it's just, I don't. That's a. Yeah, get out in nature, do something else, man. Like, it's crazy. But they're so necessary for our line of work. Yeah, no, but that's, I mean, that, that I'd have, have to try that for sure. That's mm-hmm. uh, Leave it at home. Just leave it at home. You go out to I dinner left, with I, friends? Like, why do you need your phone? I left it, I mean, I was, as a middle of a work week, I left it at home and I'm like driving. I'm like, maybe I'll go the whole day without it. And I'm like, Wow. I can't do the next two things I have to do without my phone. Yeah. So I had to drive back home. And well, it's not just a phone. It's like there's more power it's in our third iPhones limb now. Or fifth limb, sixth limb. I don't know what it is. Well, <laughs> it's it's your social media. It's your phone. It's what you text from. It's the internet. Yeah. It's apps. It's your connectivity you know, to the world. Yeah. There's more power in your iPhone now than the computers that took them to the moon in the yeah. 60s. You That's know what crazy. I mean? So it's, it's kind of nuts. So it's, yeah, they're, but they're necessary evils. It's like a car, you know? Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, okay, we talked about we talked about the tech, but how could it be useful, right, with podcasts and and, and audible audiobooks? So, what are so for the whole mindset of uh, you know cold plunges? What are some books or podcasts that you listen to just to get you in that? Hey, let's conquer some tough shit today. Uh, if anyone listens to my podcast, I probably talk too much about Rogan if I had to guess. <laughs> But uh, it, that's just who I am. Uh, so yeah, it's GRE is number one for sure. Um, big fan of Lex Friedman, um, Andrew Huberman's podcast, um, Modern Wisdom uh, with Chris. I forget his last name, but it's he's very yeah, it's good. It's a really good podcast. Um, those are probably my top ones. Um, but yeah, Audible for sure. Green Lights by McConaughey. Um, uh, Can't Hurt Me by Goggins, of course. I've listened to it probably two or three times. Um, I forget. Kevin Hart's Audible, but it's probably, it probably is the most motivational one that I've ever listened to. Really? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like he's, he's a hustler and like motivation comes and goes, but it's all about discipline. Yeah. It's just repetitive. I think that's, that's a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was telling you earlier, I got Elon's new biography, which mm-hmm. I, I'm a big fan of Elon. I think he's actually truly trying to help humanity. Um, so I like learning about other people's lives as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I love those. When it comes to music, um, I still listen to like Tiesto if I'm in the gym, it takes me back to like the party days, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, it's, I, I just prefer listening to conversations. Um, and I've got a lot that it's made me a better person in life. Uh, it's made me to have more patience at home with the kids and everything too. Um, but yeah, I, 
I love conversations and, you know, that's one of the reasons why I started my podcast too. I just, I was such a big fan and still am of, of conversations and podcasts in general. Um, I was like, oh, like, look how much fun these people are having just talking to some interesting people. I wonder if I could do the same. And so I kind of just set up mine at home and turned my, I turned my paint booth into a studio. So it's a decent size and built a bar and TV and darts and started decorating with posters and built a table and I went to Long and McQuaid and talked to someone there. I'm like, hey, what do I need? I don't know anything about anything. And they just downloaded um, Logic on my computer and kind of set it up and chipped away at it. Yeah, so cool. the, the next stage is to to film. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, like I, I find listening to conversations, podcasts, audiobooks, at least you're learning, you know, using the time wisely. Mm-hmm. Like if you're in the gym, if you're driving – even if you're working like some like that you don't really need to be talking to anybody all day like you're you're literally using this time to learn something else instead of and I find you know what you actually learn better because you're in the middle of doing a task right and and then with you're mixing two types of movements mm-hmm. you're you're learning you're hearing uh listening and then by doing something you kind of remember things a little bit better yeah um so that's and then music is like I love it. I don't, I haven't actually even been in touch with like the latest new hit songs. Oh, that's, right? Yeah. Way over me now. Yeah. Like I, like I'm sure I'll catch the radio here and there, but it's like. Radio sucks. Yeah. It's, it's a dying you know, breed, you, man. You don't even, you don't, yeah. well, that's the thing. Like you're wasting time. You're, yeah. I mean, you're Commercials, like, the radio hosts, brutal. Like yeah. they're talking about celebrity stuff. I'm oh like, my God. I hate, I hate that. Like, I hate those. Yeah. Like I, I like, uh, Spotify for certain types of music, but like if I'm in the gym, I almost go back to like old school music. I used to listen to like Linkin Park, Metallica, you know, it's great. Like I'll put it on like Chris Stapleton. So like Sean James, people like that, yeah. where it's like the music gets you going. Yeah. I don't really back. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't really do podcast audible when I work out. Cause I, I want to be like fired up or like ready to go. But, um, but yeah, like I like, I like the EDM music, you know, good beats and stuff like that. But that's literally the only time I listen to music. Um, I took a break from podcasts a while ago. Cause I was like, this is yeah so much information all the time and the world's in chaos. And I'm like, okay, time to switch to audible. Like, I don't want any politics. I don't want any, any studies that are happening. I just, I just want to learn about say Elon or McConaughey's life or something like that, or Goggins or none of that is. Yeah. And yeah. It's just, it's nice, a nice break. Yeah, no, I definitely need that sometimes. Cause ultimately it is current events, right? And that's, yeah. that's, that's where they get the clicks and the views is they're trying to be, you know, current and controversial and they're mm-hmm. going to, they're going to bring that. Yeah. Especially it's, it's exhausting. Rogan and um, for me, uh, Patrick, but David. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Yeah. He was just on uh, yeah, like a month or so ago. Yeah. He's a smart guy. Yeah. Super smart. Yeah. Um, and then, so, okay, well, we're going to get into this food because we're going to talk about diet too. And you were telling yeah, yeah, me about, yeah. so what, so with health, with, you know, improving your mental state, with improving your, you know, uh, physical state through cold plunges, what do you do to improve your, 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 your physical state through food? What, what is it? That- I just base off my food. Like I've tried different diets through the years and stuff and kind of see what worked best. Um, but I just lean towards more of like an animal based diet, if anything. Um, cause that's what I, that's what I kind of, what I believe in, um, is like what the human body was designed to eat, you know, mm-hmm. think back to like caveman days and stuff like that. And kind of like the Mediterranean diets, I think a popular one because it's just a lot of fruits and veggies and seafood and stuff like that. Um, I just stay uh, away from this just, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was saying to you before I, I came on. I was like, I, like if I go out, with the family or a date night or some friends, because it doesn't happen as often as it used to, I'll just say, oh, fuck it, I'm eating a burger tonight. Give me, give me an IPA. Like, because you still need that. It's the mouth pleasure. It's the break from being so strict all the time. But yeah, I just stick to mostly meat. Um, and but I'm still like eating rice and stuff like that and potatoes, but very simple ingredients. Mm-hmm. Like if you're gonna have a salad, like don't dump a huge amount of sauce on it that just jack the calories up. Salad's mostly water in general, but. Um, but yeah, I try to avoid all processed food, um, any like seed oils and stuff like that, like canola oil and stuff like stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I just kind of base off how I feel after I eat. Cause you kind of shouldn't feel your body digest your food. If you're sleepy after you eat, well, that's probably not a good sign, you know? So I just kind of steer towards that and just fitness and health is number one for me. You know, if you, if you can't take care of yourself, how are you supposed to take care of others? And that's kind of what I base kind of my life rules off of. Mm-hmm. Just, just 
real food. You know, even if it, if the cardboard box has to say real food, it's probably not real food. Real food you know, yeah. like everyone's so concentrated. It's a protein now. It's called real food. Yeah. You know, it's like everyone's so concentrated on like nutritional facts, but nobody looks at the ingredients. You know, if the first five ingredients, if it's like high fructose corn syrup or canola oil or says sugar, well, you probably shouldn't be eating it. Mm-hmm. You know, from time to time, go ahead, have your cheat meal or whatever you want to call it, you know, but it's yeah, up but to you. Yeah, but they'll make it like part of the staple food you eat every day. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm all for that diet. So we went to Barley Merchant. They were on already. We uh, got their steak frits and their prawns. Um, it's tasty. So good. They, uh, they're they awesome because actually a lot of their sauces, if not all of them, are in-house, right? Yeah. So they actually use minimal amount of processed foods. It's all made from scratch. So it's funny because you don't think that when you think of like a tap house Mm -hmm. where they have a bunch of beers on tap. Yeah, yeah. They have pretty good food when it comes to all that. And um, uh, yeah, they have a pretty good use of like all these different types of veggies too. So definitely go check them out. Yeah, like I I was saying to you earlier, like I've driven by past that place hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. You know, like I should try and pop in there more. What is this, a pesto sauce? I haven't had this one yet. Looks like it. That's a steak. Some meat there too. Mm Mm-hmm. Can't go wrong with meat. Some nope. people might fight against it, but no, <laughs> that's how we came to be. No, it's good. I have a friend who's vegetarian. He was on, and like I try vegetarian food all the time, and he, I'm just blown away how good it is. But mm-hmm. at the same time, he's like, "Hey, man, you're meat. I'm just not gonna." Yeah, like I don't care if you do or don't. It's too politicized these days. Mm-hmm, like if yeah. something works for you, go ahead. And these days, it all depends where you get that your information so from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, well, I'm wrong. And, but if that says I'm right and you say I'm wrong, but that's right. Like you live your life how you want to, mm-hmm. but it's people like to argue these days. And it's always like, if you don't agree with me, then we can't be friends. We can't be friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the big one. That's man. the crazy it's one, f- right? It's fucked up. You have different views. Before, like I remember when I was a kid sitting around the table and like, you know, family members would argue with politics and it's like, they're not like punching each other mm-hmm. out. Whereas now, you don't agree with what somebody thinks, and and all of a sudden now you're you're like, okay, well, we can't even hang out anymore because yeah. we're not on the same team. Too tribal. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it, it, social media. It's, so it's a, it's I got a, a question for you then, since you have an 18 month old. Yeah. What do you? Well, I don't know if you've thought about this at all. Have you thought about what age a kid should be when you give them a phone? Or not even just a phone, like, like give, access to social media. Having the internet, free range, I guess, almost. Oh, that's tough. <clears throat> like, I have nieces and nephews that, well, the oldest niece I have is 10, and she still doesn't have a phone phone. She uses, like, a tablet at home, mm-hmm. but she doesn't have, like, a phone to take to school. And I would say, like, she grew up in an era where it's like, tablets just came out, iPads just came out. Hey, you know cool. They're learning. They're playing these little games. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're distracted. Mm-hmm. They didn't know yet the side effects of it. Right. And I would say she's not, yes, she relies on it a lot, but it's not like she's antisocial. Like she's probably the most social 10 year old. I know. I mean, I don't know many 10 year olds, <laughs> but it's like when I see kids interact with each other, like she's everywhere we go, she's going up to people and like me. So I think it comes down to the personality. Right. And uh, and how the child is raised aside from just like, here's technology. Because, yeah, when they're home and there's nothing to do, maybe they won't go out of their way to go play in dirt. I mean, she's a girl, so she probably wouldn't do that anyways. But like when it comes to being with friends, she's not she has friends. She she they, she plays sports. She's super active, super socialized. Right. So it's weird. Like mm. I, And like developmentally, like she's smarter in different aspects Maybe not as like book smart as somebody who never really had a phone growing up. Maybe they were more into like the books and the, you know, movies and learning things. Yeah. But she's more socialized, which is, Mm -hmm. which is one thing. Yeah. Street smart versus book smart. I'm seeing, I'm seeing that more through, through, because of YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because you see all these kids, all these influencer kids. That's what's going to be damaging. I think the most is these influencer kids. They're kind of like Disney kids. Comparison. Yeah, Yeah. But but these kids who are watching these kids, they're like, oh, cool. Like these guys, like their energy's up all the time. Now I can be like that with other people. So they're almost like trying to imitate it mm-hmm. and they're going out making friends with everyone, which yeah. is 
which is like, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's a, there's a pros and cons, right? Personally, um, I, we haven't really had that discussion um, of having the phone. We're probably going to go with like the Firefly route. Mm-hmm. You know what that, about that? Yeah. So it's just like emergency calls, yeah. 911, and I'm definitely going to chip them. Uh, put yeah. a, put a put an air tag on them somewhere <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I don't even have to ask when they're older. I don't even have to be like, "Hey, where are you?" I'll just check my phone. Okay, they're there. Okay, cool. I know yeah, where like at. for emergency <laughs> purposes, I think it's good. But like, I've heard the discussion. I think actually McConaughey was talking about it. It's like I don't want to give my phone. Uh, I keep my kid a phone until they're fifteen. Well, the the purpose of giving it to them was for emergencies. But yeah. it's like if you have a button, emergency button. Like like the new uh, iPhone uh, Apple Watches where it's like mm-hmm. a walkie-talkie, right? Imagine that, but it's like a phone. Yeah. And you have a chip, put it in their shoe, put it in something that they're going to wear always, put it in their necklace. You can track them. They just click that button. Hey, something's going on. Boom. You know where they are. You don't even yeah. have to like text back and forth. It's like done. Immediate. So I think that by the time... She's of that like life age. Alert. I think that'll probably be. What's that? It's like life alert. Those old school commercials. Yeah, except with a <laughs> with a tracking chip in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the route I would take. I have friends right now with uh, really young uh, kids, and when they go out, they have they have air tags. They're air tagged, which is crazy. Yeah, well, I think like I've heard the arguments of like this is it's a good thing. Depends who you talk to, of course, but it's like that danger was always there, but now it's available for everyone to see. Oh yeah. Like, you know, like a, someone guy in a van, you know what I mean? Picking up kids. Like that was always kind of there, but now it's everywhere because we have access to all the information. If something happens five minutes ago, it's already on Mm -hmm. social media six minutes after that. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be an interesting world, especially for parents trying to fight against a lot of the stuff that's coming up at school these days and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's uh, I know we have to wrap this up, but I yeah, just no want to bring this up too. Is I heard this super interesting, and it was like our our age, a little bit older parents, parents. I'm going to call them boomers. Yeah, yeah. right. They used what's the social media platform they use the most? It's Facebook because mm-hmm. it's like a community platform, right? Yeah. They get to reconnect with friends, people they know that they used to know, and see how they're doing. We still kind of use it, but our age. Uh, or at least my generation, a little bit younger, got really into Instagram, right? And that's because it was a highlight reel. Because Mm -hmm. guess what? Growing up, they told us, don't put everything online because your employer is going to find it. So what do we do? We pick the best parts of our life. We post them there. So it's kind of like our virtual um, resume. Resume, Virtual resume. Well, now what's happening is kids, they're going to get to that age where it's like deep fakes, are going to be a real thing. Oh, yeah, they're getting pretty crazy. I have friends who don't even, they don't even post their kids. I do. I probably shouldn't, but like they post their babies' faces. They they blank out their faces on the like mm-hmm. posts, and um, I get it, right? But when they grow up, they're gonna be so scared of that that they're actually never gonna show their face ever on social media. So the argument is in the future, actually, even though they're gonna be the most connected through the internet, they're actually gonna be the least uh, public on the internet, and that's why you'll see more of an avatar phase. Right. Like you're seeing with like Fortnite and like mm-hmm. Roblox and stuff where these kids are like avatars and that's how they're kind of. And now you see even avatars on like our emojis and all that stuff where you can make an avatar yourself. It's not yep. you, but these kids are going to be using these avatars of themselves instead of actually their physical image mm-hmm. on social because that can't be faked. Yeah. Like right? I heard a Lex Friedman just had Zuckerberg on, but they had avatars of themselves with 3D scans. Oh, wow. And it is the most realistic avatar I have ever seen in my life. That's on the like podcast, like a video podcast. Yeah. So if you go to Lex Friedman's Instagram, it's yeah. like the third one to the right, I think. It's fairly new. So they did a whole scan of him. And then they had, like, I think the new Meta uh, mm-hmm. VR goggles on. Oh, wow. And they were in different parts of the United States having a podcast with their avatars. Wow. And it is the most insane thing I have ever, ever seen. Like, I'll send it to you and you'll be like, that's an avatar. That's cool. Because Lex is like super intelligent, MIT, worked at Tesla, everything. And he is blown away because like hair, the skin, the beard, like it is mind blowing. I've, I've sent wow. it to so many people because I've never seen anything like this. I'll check it out. That, this mean, is that'll, just the that'll, beginning. That'll, that'll take the, change the podcast thing completely. Yeah. Because yeah, I like in person, I've had people reach out like, oh, you want to do, you know, over Zoom? I'm almost like, I did it twice. And I was like, I'm not doing this. Again. No, it's different. Like, you don't like get this. that interaction. Yeah. Yeah. But speaking of which, where can people find you? 
plug that. Yeah, uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, this is life. That's the uh, podcast, but also posting about Boreas. And then uh, there's BoreasPlunge.com as well. And we do have an Instagram page, uh, Boreas Plunge. And then my contracting business is just on Instagram. I don't even have a web page for it, but it's just uh, vaulted contracting. So, and Spotify, this is life. Podcast. This is life with Jamie Thorns on iTunes and Spotify. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry to rush it at the end. No, it's <laughs> all got, good, bro. Got really into it. Yeah. Uh, definitely want to do this again. Maybe I'll jump on yours and jump in yeah. a cold plunge. And we'll do hot cold therapy and then jump in the studio. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. You want to do that? That's going to just throw off the whole interview. No, people are relaxed. Because people get uptight on the mic for the first time, right? Yeah. Like it's not till half hour 40 in until they're relaxed. Yeah. So I say, hey, if you want to do a hot cold therapy session before, it's a great way to relax people. Uh, and then we go into the studio. And you have an excuse too. Like, oh, I was stuttering because of the cold. <laughs> yeah. But we sometimes we warm up after because I don't want the person shivering. Yeah. And then we have a little bit of scotch, maybe oh, cigar or something. There you go. Oh, <laughs> and the, the cigar. Oh, That's I'd, my guilty I'd, pleasure. I'd, I'd be into that for sure. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks for jumping yep. on today, Thank Jamie. You. Thanks for my. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions for myself or Jamie, you can comment down below or hit them up on Instagram. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. We make videos like this. I think we're on a monthly rate now, <laughs> but uh, uh, tune in. We talk about all the things Langley. So yeah, thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.